Okay, so we have made some of our keyframes. Now, how do we transition and change our single still images that we made in Photo P or in Photoshop? How do we turn them, I have eight of them here, into something moving? We're going to use a program called gifmaker.me. And you need to have already your, your images saved somewhere you can find them. So I have this folder called keyframes and I have them numbered in sequence. So I'm going to upload my images. And I'm gonna look for recent. Get to digital art, Simon 5, keyframes. And I'm gonna select them all. Here I'll list them by name. though we can move them around within the program. And then I say open. So it brings them in. This is a free browser-based, you know, animation editor. Just, this is called frame by frame animation. And you'll see it automatically starts adjusting it, right? So we can increase our canvas size, which would soften our pixels. We could decrease it to make it work for you know, a smaller website application. What we want is 100%, because that means it's real, a translation directly of our pixels. So my image is 1200 by 1200 pixels. That's eight inches by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. And then we get to set the speed and you, you get the preview there and 500 milliseconds. That's half a second for each one. I'm going to speed it up a little or bit by shrinking it down to maybe 350 milliseconds. And then we can repeat it as many times as we want, but I'm gonna use zero because if I do zero, then it will just keep on repeating. Okay. So because I set up everything correctly, everything is in the right order here. This is like looking at the, the film strip of our animation. But if I needed to, I could always rearrange and move or even delete ones that weren't needed. So you can try different things. And then I simply say, create GIF animation. And then it, you, you wait, and then you'll be able to download so you can test it. So now, then, then I want to click on download the GIF. And it will download to my downloads. And just like saving out of Photopea, it's going to give it its own name. So you need to find it. I'm just going to call this, so this is called an animation test or sometimes an animatic. And then I'm going to open it with a browser. And I tend to use Safari for this because I don't use Safari for anything. So I might as well use it for testing my animations. And it shows it to me at real size. So I can see that I've got all my pixels there. And then I can see the timing. Yeah, and that timing seems pretty good. It's choppy, but if we were to really animate professionally, we'd be doing 24 frames per second, and this is closer to three frames per second. Okay, 350 milliseconds. So that's an animation test. You can run those through anytime you want and kind of get a sense of, of how your keyframes are working. Okay, so for the time being, I'm actually not gonna save that. And I'm gonna go back to Photo P. And now I'm confident that we have hit this mark. And now we need to start with the last three.
And this is pretty easy because I've already built all of my assets that I need. That sun was the last asset. So now I'm going to be just adjusting those. And maybe I'll work from the top down now. And I'll make the sun a little bit brighter. And I'll move the atmosphere a little bit around the ice block. So it starts to look like it's kind of sloughing off. And I can shift the crystals and then shift their opacity way down. And you see those sunbeams now are really starting to come out. So much so I probably can not push it quite so, so much. And go from 30 to 50, that should be plenty. Then I can move the atmosphere a little. Then the ice, do I want it to start receding? I don't think quite yet. At least not dramatically enough to turn off some of the assets, but I can take the opacity down a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Then this block, yes, I can start fading it down. So the eye is a little revealed. And then these blocks, I can start fading them down a little bit. Actually, maybe just from the, the top. So I'll leave this all pretty solid. The character, again, doesn't move yet. His head isn't free to move or get color back yet. He's still kind of frozen. But the clouds are going to start to fade a little bit more in the sky. And the color, I can duplicate it. And actually, instead of duplicating it, I can go back. Uh, yeah, I'm probably safest duplicating it. I could try to go back to the instance where it's already brighter. But I'll get there by the end. So right now, maybe I just want to... downgraded a bit. You know what I'll do is I'll make it a combination of these two. The warmer at about 50%. Now remember we save ah, we save our keyframes so that we can compare with what we had before. Because we're getting a sense now of what kind of the even pace is of them. So I want to be able to look at both and see the difference. Yeah, so the atmosphere is definitely clearing up and is starting to warm up a little bit. Okay. Yep, that'll work. So, save it. This is a new adjustment. Even though we didn't add any layer assets, we readjusted them. And then I'm going to export it as a JPEG. It goes to my downloads folder, eventually. Oh, sure I hit save. goes to my downloads folder, rename it. This is frame seven. In my storyboard sketch, it's right here. Then I bring it into my keyframes. And if I want to, I can run an animation test. I'm just gonna do my, my quick cheat animation test and open it up in preview. Make sure they open all up in the same line. There we go. And then I can just use my arrow key to kind of animate between them.
So it's not a dramatic change between these two, but that's it's setting it up so that the ice will really start to melt. And you can see in the small images, yeah, that sun's coming out more believably now. Okay. So next, we'll maybe I'll work from the, the background. I want to brighten it up more. I want the clouds to recede more. I want the character, the ice, to be lessened. And maybe even the head starts to move a little bit. So I can make a duplicate, go to Puppet Warp under Edit. Definitely need to lock the base and where it's still frozen in ice. But then that allows me to pivot maybe the head a little bit. I'm going to dim the ice at the feet a little. So many different things to control. I'm going to move the atmosphere around. And I'm going to swap the crystals and take them almost all the way out. So what do I have in my last keyframe? Yeah, just tiniest bit of that distortion in the sky. About like that. And then I can slough off this kind of haze I have over the ice down a little bit more, reveals the head a little better. And then the sun, I want to just make a little bit brighter. And maybe for my character, I start to give the character a little bit of color back. So I go to hue saturation, and I'm just going to saturate it a little. Maybe a little bit more towards the yellows as he's absorbing the sun. OK, good. So that's my next keyframe. I know it's very repetitive, but it gets you to think it all through and it, it gives you a lot of safety. So if you want to go back, you can make changes. Because I'm not destroying any assets. If I make a change, I make a duplicate before I make the change. So within all of these different layers, organized in these different folder groups, I have what's needed to make every keyframe so far. So if I decide there needs to be more keyframes in between, I can go back to that point and adjust them. Just like Tim Burton animating Jack Skellington has cases and cases full of different Jack Skellington heads. It's not like he uses one head and then moves it. Instead, they actually swap the heads in and out so they can always go back to a previous frame. Okay. Let's see. That's going to be in downloads. And that will be keyframe number eight. But I'm noticing that it's actually just like uh, freezing the creature took a little bit longer than my keyframe suggests, thawing my character out where there's just ice around the feet, I'm not quite there yet. So even though this is could be number eight, I'm going to say instead it's number 7B to go between 7 
and eight.